It's not like any other boat that I've ever been on. It's not. Like, I don't, everybody talks a big game. It's not. This is, you know, we're coming in with 100 plus every trip. No one that I know of right here is doing that. Of, a, of the last great fishing port. I mean, that says something, right? For almost a decade. And it's something else. It's no joke. It's not like any other boat I've been on, I can tell you that. It was big for me growing up in Portland. And I was one of the last big boats to leave Maine on this boat, the three. So I come to New Bedford now and it's a still a fishing village. There's the sustainability and the people appreciate you and I love that. And like if you're a fisherman here, you're still somewhat celebrated. The first steps in building the company were really focused on acquiring assets in the scallop fishery. But as the company came together, the management became aware of a unique situation in the ground fish industry. That's an industry that has been depressed in New England since really the late 80s. And thanks to some really good fisheries management practices, and unbeknownst to you know, the population at large, the, the fishery has come back in a strong way. We're leaving something like 85 to 90% of the quota of these species every year in the water. There's three main species. So you have haddock, an item that competes traditionally with cod, we also have the redfish, which is very much underutilized here in the U.S. If you can get a fresh piece of redfish, which we get all the time, obviously, it is a sweet, mild, white fish. Pollock is the same thing, Atlantic pollock. Atlantic pollock is, the, is very abundant, okay? Ours is snow white. I mean, this, this fishery here, it is as nice as some of the product I've seen elsewhere, you know, specifically the Faroe Islands. For us, being able to drive more value out of that fishery makes all the sense in the world. As with all things on this boat, we're not just coming in with poor quality fish. Our fish are top notch. They look good. We, I pride myself on that, as does everybody here that's a regular on this boat. What these customers need is the ability to uh, project out long-term stable supply. We, we've just started to build an opportunity, a collection of assets that will provide for significant growth. Started at six, it's 350 right now. That's a short unload for us. We go out and work. We're going to get the chance to build the first really truly new fleet. We can take advantage of new technologies to find fish, more selectively harvest the fish that we're looking to catch and avoid the species that uh, are still under duress and that we want to keep in the water so that they can recover. We want to be able to increase the level of safety that we afford our captains and crews when they're out on the water because this is at its best of times a, a dangerous and challenging job. Generally speaking, we have a core group of guys that come in here and do battle week after week after week. You come out here to go to war to catch these fish, you know, sustainably. Well, that's another thing about this boat. We're very clean. We use our ground fish net. You don't catch big bags of monk tails. And we also have the ability to use new technologies to greatly reduce the carbon footprint of all of our activity on the water while increasing the overall volume of our harvest. We've implemented protocols to clean, disinfect. We have added technologies like tub systems and gutting machines and slurry ice that help preserve the quality of the fish, but also change the day-to-day -day routine for the fishermen on these boats. In addition to that, it's a long, arduous day out there on the water, and there are things that we can do to uh, make life a little bit better for the crews out there. For example, we've, we've put in uh, systems like Direct TV. Keeping the comfort of the crew in mind is, is a significant aspect of that. We have just people from all over, whether it be Cape Verdean, Portuguese, uh, Central American, South American. You have 
a lot of different people represented, but then you also have the traditional uh, New Englanders. I have a 14-year-old son, and it definitely provides a good living on the other end for him. And I have a fiance. I go to work enough that she was able to go back to school to get her master's without having to worry about working. And this brings a huge value to these communities. I mean, I don't want to say it's you know it's just a job because it's more than that. A lot of these people, this is what they're this is what you know they've specialized in, whether it be trimming or cutting or offloading. The pride that the offload crew has, working many nights in snowstorms, cold weather, hot weather, builds a sense of camaraderie. It's not an us them. It's you know it's 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 a pride of being here at Blue Harvest. Very very proud of the company and, and what we've done.